Oh, snap. You made it to part two. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. Um, so I know in the last video I said, nay, I promised you wouldn't have to watch me read. Uh, but there is a very important part in one of the manuals that I found. So that's what we're going to start with here. It's very short, I promise. And I'm going to make up for it in this video with far more impressive music to really capture the lack of intensity that I know I'm bringing to the table. Huh? All right, here we go. So right off the bat, power supply, motherboard. Uh, motherboards the power supply is compatible with. Uh, they list a bunch of different ones. Um, the top one being the Intel ATX 12 volt version 2.51. Oh, and the motherboard requires a power supply that complies with ATX 12 volt specification 2.0 or later. So they're using roughly the same terminology, but different words. And it's one of those sort of, you know, horseshoes and hand grenade situations. All right, so you know how I mentioned earlier I was worried that the BIOS on this was gonna to be too old since it was released in 2019 and it wasn't gonna work with the new Ryzen 5000 chip that I got. Uh, I found some loose documents in here. These are motherboard technical updates and then a specification update that does say that it supports the 5000 series, but no mention of the BIOS. So I'll roll the dice on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the stuff we've all seen a hundred times of people assembling all the parts that you put on the motherboard before putting it in the case. Um, and then the part I'm going to hem and haw over for a while, I'm sure, are all the power supply, plugins, headers, everything on the outer rim here. Um, although the water pump uh, power supply is there. I'm building it on this rubber mat uh, which is actually like a gardening kneeling pad because uh, I don't have a workbench. I'm not the pro at all this. Uh, so this will have to do. And I did get one of those anti-static wrist things. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use it. I'm wearing shoes on my carpet, so static shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but I'm going to keep some metal nearby to touch. And uh, we're going to get this going. Some things I learned there. Um, the RAM does not just snap into place as simply as I, it looks in the other videos. In fact, um, I lifted to get underneath and push down and I heard a cracking noise. Um, so now I'm worried I just destroyed the whole thing. So yeah, don't do that. Don't have inconsistent pressure on the bottom of the board um, when putting in your RAM. Uh, the SSD went in nice and smooth, little secure, little stanchion and secure screw there. Um, and the Ryzen 9 5900X uh, went in pretty simply. There is an interesting, like, almost like Velcro noise when you put the arm back down to lock it into place. Uh, You'll, you'll hear that as you're closing it, and it sounds a little unnatural, but I'm sure it's not. Who knows? Next thing is putting it in the case. Uh, turn it on its side. Turns out, handy little uh, dust cover on the bottom that I didn't notice before. Uh, I'm sure I'll be learning a lot of new things about this. This is the one item that did not come with a user manual. So I'll be going off, I guess, the manufacturer's website if I have any questions. Uh, fun little detour. I know I just said that this didn't come with a manual. I thought that was odd. 
Um, I went to go put the motherboard in to the case and uh, could not find the mounting screws anywhere. I was like, did I misplace them? I kept everything where they need to be. Uh, and then hidden inside the like hard disk drive, like I bought a regular spinning disk drive, two terabytes to go in the hard disk. There's a little slide out and there's a box in here. So we're gonna find out what's in this box. This might be the user manual, hopefully the mounting screws. Uh, it wasn't something I'd thought about previously. Sort of assumed they would come with a motherboard. But... All the mounting screws a man could want. Look at that. And the user manual. Time for some reading. What I wanted to show you was that behind the I.O. plate that I put in first, there are these metal springs that are going to push back on the motherboard as you push it towards it and make it a little harder to try and align properly. Um, but I guess that's, there's a purpose to that, I'm not really sure. But then also that it has enough wattage to actually supply all of the components with the right amount of power. All right, so exactly what you should be doing, consulting actual experts and then coming back here to watch me probably break something. As you can see, my workspace is getting more and more organized as we go. Um, so looking at the power supply, as if this bundle crazy bundle of cables wasn't intimidating enough. Like a daisy chain of SATA drives. If you want to have like 16 of them all strung together, somehow all of this is going to have to get in there along with this sucker. But the good news is these be quiet ones are modular. I don't have to use probably half of these. So you just need to find three fan headers on your motherboard, pop these into place. So we're taking a little bit of a detour. We're going to study up, make sure we get it right. Wait, you forgot the I.O. shield. Yeah, that was what I said. Haha, you passed for that somehow. See, I did that too. I forgot the I.O. shield at first. Um, and yes, this is an excuse to take a break and eat some pizza. Talking about power cables earlier. I got these white extensions. Uh, now I've got another like foot and a half of cable to worry about inside this case. Research, folks. Okay, we're back. Um, so I was kind of joking earlier about this daisy chain SATA plug thing on the power supply cables. I did some Googling. SATA is not specific to hard drives. I thought it was just for this. Nope. Apparently the RGB and like even the fan control unit for my AIO cooler um, uses a SATA plug. They all say SATA on them, so uh, this is what I was worried about. This whole mess of wires, I'm tracing each one to where it goes and trying to make sure I'm plugging in the right place and button. All right, so I think I have some of this stuff figured out. Um, one of these modular drives port, drives, power ports, has this multiple plug daisy chain cable coming off of it, will power, um, the SATA plug coming out of the, the case and the hard drive itself here, uh, the, the, the disk drive I have, um, which fits in this nice little uh, handy little drawer thing and slides inside there, which I'll show you later. Um, some of these plugs, I can't figure out what they're for. I'm going off shape because there's no labeling. This one only has three pins. I found a header with only three pins and a you know, missing one right there. Uh, guessing it goes with that. This one's gonna take me a while. No clue what that is. Let me focus. Uh, 
focus. Okay, good news, bad news. Good news, I know what this plug is now. I'm sure you already know, and you're yelling at the screen, you idiot, it's this. Um, it's the USB-C plug from the top of the case that's supposed to go to the motherboard. Unfortunately, the X570 Plus does not have a header for USB-C on the board. You only get one, and it's back here on the I.O. Uh, if you want that, you need the Pro. So Maybe I should have um, got the Pro, or if I did that cracking sound I heard earlier, if I did snap this, then I'm going with the Pro. Um, good news is Montec case makers, uh, they have a Facebook Messenger technical support and they got back to me in like seven minutes. Uh, so, added plus right there. Now to figure out the rest of this mess. Incidentally, the front cover comes off. Uh, just yank on it a bit. Um, Thank you to Justin Flanagan, a uh, nice Irishman on YouTube, uh, helped me find a home for every cable that comes with the case and goes into motherboard or, or SATA power, things like that. Well, hello, and welcome back to day three of, I don't think that's where that goes. Um, we spent a lot of time yesterday on wiring. The AIO cooler that I'm using, the v Vetru Lurker 240. Um, this I mounted on the top, and I'll show you here in a second. Uh, some interesting things I noticed about this: there are two power cables coming. Well, there's one power cable coming from each fan that goes into this Y V splitter down to one, two to one. But you'll notice here, uh, this only had this is a four-pin power cable. That could, there's only three wires coming out of this side. There are four coming out of this side. So all four pins from one fan, uh, and then go into one plug in there that goes into the motherboard that has four pins. Why does one side only have three? Uh, I'm not an electrician. Maybe someone can explain that to me. But we're just going to cross our fingers on that one and hope. From an RGB perspective, everything is going to this RGB controller that came with this and has a little magnet on it and you can press buttons. Um, and presumably this can control RGB for at least two more three pin uh, devices there. And I'm gonna find out if that is a thing. Um, this is the best I'm gonna get this cable management going before I put in all the power cables, which is a whole separate conversation. Um, of course, I've been watching a lot more videos, primarily uh, Jay's Two Cents. That's been my saving grace. Now, here you can see the AIO mounted and whatnot. That doesn't look right. Um, these hoses are so stiff that it has like it's torquing the pump, and I can't tell. Oh, it's still trying to rotate it. <laughs> it is, oh my God. I can't tell if it's aligned properly or not because these hoses are pushing on it so hard. And I can't see, well, get in there. I can't see where the plate on the bottom of the pump is making contact with the I can't even get that in. With the CPU, because the RAM's in the way, so I'm gonna have to remove the RAM just to get an angle and be able to see where it's making contact because my dumbass believes that there's a chance I could over torque the pump as I'm screwing it into place and damage the CPU. Is that a thing? I don't know. You guys are probably commenting right now about how dumb that is. No idea. Uh, Got all the other headers, I believe, plugged in. Um, I'm 
a little confused about the power supply going to here and then the CPU power supply. There are, uh, there's a four pin plug option and an eight pin plug option. Um, and the power cable, look here, for that has four pins here, but 10 on the other end. And if we look at our power supply, we see here that there's something called P8P4, which I assume is the eight pin end here, but it's a 10 pin, 10, 10 pin here that turns into an eight. And the inside of the piece that plugs into the has 10 little pins, but there's there's no leads inside the middle two. But there are pins inside the middle two here. I'm not sure if that's a problem. Uh, and they're all labeled for which thing they're powering, PCIe 1, PCIe 2, and so forth, um, which would be our GPU, which is this cable here with the extensions on it. Of course, the end of that says VGA, not GPU. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and, since I know they're related, um, but something I've noticed when you're looking at your power unit, do your best to understand the nomenclature on the back because it's all different. And I'll be honest, the uh, Be Quiet, as well rated as it is, um, they don't really have the best diagrams that are going to tell you how this is gonna to conform to any varying number of motherboards. It's a little confusing. Um, I did find out though that if you go to their website, they have their own calculator where you can put in the exact components you're getting um, and it'll tell you which power supply would be best. It looks like I'm a little, I went way over with this 850 Platinum. I'll be more than good with the components I have, enough room to expand. Okay, sorry, this is dragging on, isn't it? And the music really isn't helping, I'm sorry. As I tried to make it clear early on, this is not an instructional video. This is not to teach you how to do something. It's simply to show you what it looks like when someone who knows nothing makes an attempt. Uh, so hopefully you're learning from mistakes and you're picking up uh, things not to do, questions to maybe ask, uh, things to look at closer. So. We're getting there. Uh, next video, we'll start off with uh, what happened right after I installed the AIO pump on the CPU um, and go from there and finish everything off. We'll make it a trilogy.